Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens, and this is going to be an update on the land speed record challenge that I last took an attempt at about two and a half years ago. My early efforts culminated in a vector-powered rocket car that reached a heat-limited top speed of 1,850 meters per second. I say heat-limited, but there was other factors that limited this top speed. I would have loved to have just slapped a bunch of heat shields on the front, but the drag would have prevented it from even reaching the speed to need the heat shielding in the first place. Through use of inline part attachment and offsetting, I was able to get my drag low enough to afford to put a heat shield on the front, which got me all the way up to a top speed of 2,500 meters per second. At the time, I remember thinking that 2,500 meters per second should be about the limit of what one can do with a rocket car in the stock game. However, Stratz and Blitz showed that combining some fairing occlusion along with some very clever workarounds to some glitches, one could get all the way to just under 3,500 meters per second. I, of course, wanted to improve on this, but I found that this speed was right around the point where fairings would start to blow up instantly, whether or not you had something in front of them. This seemed like a hard barrier to any significant progress, and as a result, I didn't touch this for about two years. However, recently when working on another project, I discovered that by taking the one and a quarter meter heat shields and offsetting them into a grid configuration, I could better shield a fairing behind them from aerodynamic heating. With this discovery, I brought my rocket car back onto the drawing board and decided to see how fast I could get it to go. As with the previous record attempts, the runway is nowhere near long enough, so I'm going to need to fly this thing to the North Pole. To do this, I've strapped two rapier modules to either side. I'm going to have to take it fairly slow on the flight over there because I've very carefully tuned the amount of ablator that I've put on the heat shields at the front. We don't want to affect that at all, so I'm going to take it in a nice leisurely 900 meters per second, which is still fast enough to get there pretty quickly. Not so fast that we're going to be burning off the heat shields. The ice shelf we can see up ahead is our destination. The plan is to land there, detach the rapier modules, and we'll be ready to make our land speed record attempt. I will admit to going a bit overboard on the parachutes for the landing, but it did expedite the landing process quite a bit. One of the ways I avoid overheating here is shielding. The other way is just doing everything quickly. I've designed not just for speed, but also for acceleration. The faster we can get up to speed and the faster we can slow down, the less time we spend accumulating heat. The rocket car itself that's going to go for the land speed record is divided into three stages. The final stage is the one I spent most of my time optimizing. I then figured out exactly how fast it could go without rapid unplanned disassembly and then tuned the previous two stages to get it to exactly the right speed. The first stage consists mostly of fuel tanks. It does have two vector engines on it, but mostly it's burning the vector engines on the second stage. It reaches just over 1200 meters per second in around 18 seconds. The second stage has 16 of the vector engines all offset together and occluded inside a fairing for maximum arrow. In about 11 seconds, the second stage has gotten us from 1200 to 2700 meters per second. The final stage burns through 280 separatrons in their minimum burn time of 5 seconds. At maximum speed, I deploy the fairing, which turns the array of separatrons into a giant air brake, resulting in deceleration of about 4000 Gs. This deceleration is quite necessary because normally at these speeds, everything that we've just exposed to the air would overheat quite quickly, but we decelerate so fast that it's just no time for the parts to accumulate heat. The final scorecard shows a maximum speed reached of 4,283 meters per second. It shows a g-force max of about 2,600 g's. The 4,000 g's that I'm quoting comes from an average that I saw measured over a bunch of runs. I would see the maximum G's listed anywhere between about 2,500 and about 5,500 G's. I suspect the game was having a hard time measuring it due to the extremely small time interval. It's kind of difficult to even describe how fast the third stage on this car is. It averages about 32 G's of acceleration over its 5 seconds. For my viewers in the United States and the UK, 4,283 meters per second is 9,581 miles per hour. 
and for everyone else that's 15,419 kilometers per hour. If launched on the runway from a standstill, it'll reach about 1,370 meters per second by the time that it reaches the end of it. Not only does it reach well over escape velocity during the land speed record run, but if you turn off atmospheric heating and retract the flap that was keeping it on the ground, it will actually coast all the way out of Kerbin's atmosphere and then all the way out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and will end up orbiting the sun. During the deceleration, the pilot experiences a maximum force about equal to the weight of two fully loaded Boeing 747s. Are there any direct applications of this design to other challenges? I don't see that many. But as with most of these challenges, I've learned even more about the aero model in this game, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next mission. Thank you very much for watching, and take it easy.